This video was brought to you by Marcus Beal, Elbil Mac, a battery planner, stolen by Cam Power and Beal Componente. Yo, what's up? Behind me here, you see the Ionic. Finally, I'm gonna test it. It's from 2018, so it's five years old and it has around 85K on the odometer. And I'm gonna do a degradation test and just get an impression of how it is to drive. And then we'll start doing some tests, like Yale test, probably not 1000 kilometer challenge. I also want to go to Folla or Alla when it's really cold. We'll see about that one. But okay, today it's all about the degradation test. So it's been sitting in the garage. It was around 12 degrees Celsius, but I also heat up the car locally also. So um, yeah, we can check it out now. Oh yeah. I also brought, yeah, I can show you. So since I'm doing a little uh, uh, driving, I might as well drive down to Alnabru and return some garbage. So I sorted all the garbage. We have some plastic there. We have some uh, paper there in the back here. Yeah, some more plastic and some yeah, more stuff. So. You see, the Ionic is actually a nice, it's like a Kinder Egg, yeah. It has so much space, it has, okay, not that big battery, but insane efficiency. And also, it wasn't that uh, expensive when it was out. So, here we have OBD LX, in case you guys are wondering. And then this is car scanner. I have to keep mentioning it because many people keep asking me. So you see, we are charging now on uh, the plug over there. But you see, it's charging at only 3.3, uh, 3.7 kilo, 16 amp single phase because this car doesn't have three phase charging. Wait, how much was it again? Remaining time, 15 minutes left. Wait. Come on. There, okay. 15 minutes left of charging. Um, so it's, it puts three kilowatt into the battery. You see, this was the dilemma. When I wanted to install charging stations here, uh, the electrician asked me, hey, um, how, do you, how many amps do you want? And I figured out, okay, most cars nowadays they have 11 kilowatt onboard charger. So 16 amp would have been enough. And if we have three phase, 400 volt TN. Um, yeah, this is a, by the way, cable from Metro and I love it. <laughs> I went for 10 meter cable and it's long enough to stretch over to cars with the charge port on the wrong side with the right side not the left side with the right side <laughs> no, <laughs> okay but uh so you see it also has the the tesla or you can't but it has a tesla release uh, button also remotely and so it's only 16 amp and then since this one doesn't have three phase then we get only uh, yeah 3.7 kilowatt but i'm gonna show you something cool okay first we Unlock, stop charging, stop. Okay, disconnect this one. Uh, and then we can just prepare and then we can connect this yellow, oh, sorry, this orange cable instead. I'm freaking colorblind, man. And then, okay, so then we have to disconnect this one. All right. And then here, look look at this. This is Wally. -E. I, I had it sitting in my garage for a long time at the old house for many, many years. And and uh, it's from Finland. I can show you here. We have the info plate here. I'm not sure if it, that makes any sense, but uh, it actually, you see it inputs 16 amp three phase, and then it outputs 25 amp single phase, plus another additional, plus, uh, yeah, I'll show you how it works. And uh, the problem is that it has a 16 amp red plug input, and uh, I don't have that around. But then Metron guys, man, they are brilliant. Let me see, I'm gonna show also the info plate here. So they made an adapter, or I think, yeah, I'm not sure if this is custom or whatever, but uh, they made an adapter that creates, you just plug it in here. It creates a red plug. So of course this is barely legal <laughs> because you could just unplug this one while it's charging, while the wire is live, right? Uh, and then we have some buttons in the back here for handshake. There, it initiates that one. And then there's another button, click. And then this one lights up, it's blue. And that should start the whole process of charging. Ah, oh, shit, come on. Man, what? Dude. So you see, there's a transformer. This is heavy stuff, man. I think it weighs around 15, 20 kilograms. It now blinks, means that it's charging. Uh, this one should be charging now. And let me show you. Wait. 
There, 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 look, 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 look. Oh yeah, now we're cooking. <laughs> now we get 5.2 kilowatts into the battery. Huh? <laughs> so we get 25 amp instead of 16 amp. So this is way better. It's actually a pretty good compromise since I don't want to have 32 amp uh, wired stuff with fuses. Because then I have to have 22 kilowatt and that's not common. Yeah, here this is EC app and you see that it's pulling 6 kilowatt from the plug. And then we get 5.6 something into the battery. So there are some losses here. We have losses internally in the car, of course, with the onboard charger. But also there are some losses in that box. But interesting here, you see that the way it pulls the faces. So it pulls 15 amp from two faces and the left, uh, the last one is not uh, load, loaded. But if we, I'll show you here, this is interesting. If we do this, we take a heater fan thing, right? And then it has a shuku. So what you could do is double penetrate this box. Um, if you, you could charge one car there and you can charge even another one on 16 amp here. So if I fire up, give it some load here. This is 1.5 kilowatt fan. Look what happens now. It pulls, well, let me see how many amps should it be if it's uh, one phase. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> now, then suddenly we pull 7.6 kilowatts. Wait, does it pull more for... Huh. Okay. <laughs> but I had this thing in my garage for many years. But the, th the problem is that I haven't had the use of it yet until now. So, yeah, uh, when will I use this box? It will be used when I have some old cars, like I-Pace, the old one at least. I'm not sure, yeah, and also um, the old EQC or other cars that doesn't support three-phase but has uh, 32 amp. So, <laughs> okay, anyway, I'm gonna charge up now to 100% and then we do the test. Well, how far is it, far is it now, by the way? Yeah, look at this. Now it says only five minutes left. Oh, this is going so schnell. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, look at that. Oh, yeah. Okay, almost done now. Right, we're on the move, and uh, interesting, uh, when I'm cruising at 96 on the speed, oh, that's 90 GPS speed. <laughs> no wonder why the Ionic drivers are driving so slow. Okay, but if you look here, um, this one, no wait, no, yeah, okay, this distance. Wow, look at that consumption, 135 watt hour per kilometer in winter. It's minus three degrees Celsius outside, and it's actually snowing, and the road is a little bit wet from the salt that instantly melts on the road. So yeah, very good. We are now at Haranrud recycling facility. And then here, all the garbage needs to be sorted. Paper, plastic, electronics, cables, batteries, light bulbs, metal. Yeah, so I already pre-sorted most of it. Okay, let's uh, get cracking. All right, we left the city and we're back at Minnesota. So uh, let me check the wind over here. Oh, it's a bit uh, windy. Wind from the north, the cold wind. Yeah, how is Mjösen today? Oh, okay. So minus three degrees Celsius over here, but look at the consumption, man. What the heck? We didn't go downhill. Uh, I think we are roughly the same uh, level as uh, yesterday when we started. Okay, we had a little bit of city driving, uh, but we also had some idle time. Well, I mean, not idle time, but um, we were parked uh, many places uh, and then we had to heat up the cabin again. So yeah, we're now down to 46% uh, battery. Um, this scale is not linear, so it will drop faster towards the end. But especially with this car, which has a small battery, you will feel it more than other cars. But you see that so far we have done... Wait, uh, there, 106 kilometers, huh? Not too bad, uh, but we can't go 200. It's probably going to be around 160, 70 kilometers total. So, uh, yeah, I have to say, the auto steer here works remarkably well. I mean, it's just a ping pong auto steer, but uh, it can handle some curves and it doesn't do any weird shit. So, almost feel like it's doing auto steer better than some new cars in 2023. And then the interior also looks nice. And I've been running driver only, a little bit on and off with driver only, but uh, mostly with driver only. So here we also see this pretty cool uh, 
info here about uh, well uh, driving and climate and then electronics which is uh, lights and screens and stuff so yeah man think about oh, okay i'll get the ping pongs oh shit try to disable some of it but think about this this car is from 2018 but it came out around the end of 2016 and it still worked great and we will see but uh, i don't feel that we have too much degradation here and we also have nice features like ventilated seats huh huh and also seat heater huh one small minus is that the uh, classic Ionic, they're a little bit noisy, so not the best soundproofing, especially the wheel arches lacking some. Uh, now we just happen to be on fairly fresh asphalt. It was slapped down last year. No, well, actually, was it earlier this year? Yeah, but fairly fresh. But if I move over to some rough Norwegian asphalt, and then you can hear a difference. But this is not the worst place, but yeah. yeah. So, and we even have winter tires. Uh, in general, winter tires, they're softer and uh, quieter than summer tires in Norway. Uh, but man, the seat comfort is great. Also the space, I took a little uh, trip around uh, Yesheim with wifey and she likes the comfort in the back. And also the trunk space is, I mean, it's okay for, uh, for a sedan for, well, I think it's actually called a hatchback, yeah. But it's not an SUV, but it has okay uh, trunk space, even for baby strollers and stuff. But of course, not as good as uh, crossovers SUVs nowadays. Okay, we have a low battery now, and um, you see we're down to 6.5%. Uh, be careful when you drive Ioni classic Ioniq like this, because uh, it will drop fast towards the end, and you will see turtle mode soon. So you see here that uh, available discharge power is dropping now. So, uh, like I said, uh, this car has non-linear state of charge scale. So you might be tricked by it. Yeah, we're gonna go to a supercharger and charge over there. So, um, yeah, um, let's hope that the car doesn't die on the motorway. <laughs> it's always, oh, interesting. It seems like maybe the 12 volt is not being charged at this point. But if I try to regen, let me see. Yeah, then you see that the 12 volt is charged when you regen. This is something that the Korean cars will do. Oh, yeah, that means that there is a risk of running the 12 volt low. Hmm. Uh, okay. Ah! Oh, there we go. Yeah, turtle mode is here. Okay, 5% turtle mode. Okay, okay. Let's get over to the charger, uh, hopefully. Shit, we have 2% left, but turtle mode. Yeah. And then, oh, this is a 35 kilowatt power limit. Okay. Uh, shit, let me see. This happened so fast with the classic Ionic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna exit over here and then we can just crawl over here. Oh, I feel oh shit, I feel a car is getting sluggish. Oh shit. Wait, do we have an indication for power limit here? Uh, not on this display, it seems like. Oh, I don't want to run out of juice here. At least get over to the flat open area. Okay, but it shouldn't shut down with 2% left, right? You see here. 2%, uh, 35 kilowatt power limit. Okay, 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 let's go over there. I'm still 1.5 kilometers away from the supercharger. Come on, come on, come on. Supercharger is right over there. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, no, of course, uh, when we had a few uh, percent left, then there was this dash, dash, dash on the display, but we are here. Oh, let me see, which charger should I use? Maybe V4? Nah, you know what? I've been getting some bad experience with V4. I'm gonna use V3. Okay. Oh, yeah, let me see, one of these, maybe, uh, we have so many. What, you see, like, some of the plugs, they start uh, hitting the ground. What, huh? Many of them, what the heck, man? What is wrong with the V4 uh, design here? The heck? Wait, the car becomes quite sluggish. Oh, shit. Oh, okay, get in there, get in there. So, fortunately, Ionic has the charge port on the left side with the right side. Oh, yeah, I can park just like a Tesla. You see, unlike that uh, ID3 over there, using the wrong stall. She. Because here we had the end stats, 1.5% left. Uh, we can probably still drive to zero, so I'll count that one. Here we see the cell voltage, all right, battery temperature, and uh, wow, we <laughs> average 141 watt hour per kilometer. That is simply amazing. And in the distance, yeah, 174 kilometers. All right, let's plug it in. Oh, man, this is freaking annoying. Come on, 
I mean, I know that we have turtle mode, but it happens with every Korean car. Oh yeah, we're charging now, getting 56 kilowatt. All right. Oh, I don't remember how many amps you're supposed to get, but I think this is the maximum speed. The voltage is a bit low, that's why the speed is low. Um, and also, I don't remember what the min temp needs to be to get the maximum speed, but this is probably it. So yeah, I'll wait for 10% here and then I'll start the recording. We are 61 kilowatt now. It seems like 173 amp is uh, max. Yeah, it's been a while since I tested classic Ionic, but this is amazing speed for the car that is uh, five years old uh, with a small battery. It was back in the time when they put a lot of cobalt in the battery <laughs> before cobalt became poti po uh, politically incorrect. But okay, so since I'm doing a charging test now, in general, I don't want to run the heater or the car or anything to uh, interfere with the session. So that's why I brought the EcoFlow and then I have a little heater here. Huh? Nice. Wow, look at the speed. Even at 70%, we're taking 66 kilowatt, 66, 67 kilowatt. Wow. Yeah, it's gonna throttle soon, but uh, yeah, the battery seems to want to be cold. And you can hear there's some fans going. This is only fans. This is air-cooled battery. It's not liquid cool. It's crazy. It sucks cold air in the middle here, between the, in the, well, there's vents in the, in this middle seat here. Sucks in there and then dumps it, uh, I think it's a little bit up in the trunk, but also out of the car. When it comes to degradation, I calculated that we have 24.9 kilowatt hour. It's similar to another car I tested, another Ionic that had 50, uh, that had 25.2 kilowatt hour. There might be slight measurement errors here, but uh, yeah, this is the best we can do. And then this car has 4.2% degradation. And it's not too bad considering that uh, the, the amount of kilometers it, it has done, you know, number of cycles. But actually compared to the BMW i3 I tested recently, that had even lower degradation and even more mileage. But maybe it's just a way for the Germans to hide degradation because degradation happens. But then how smart is it to have some initial top buffer that you eat up so you seem to have less uh, degradation and also a good use experience that the car feels consistent at least for the few few let's say first five years right and then of course degradation will happen but yeah so interesting this is just a start i will do more tests with this ionic and then we'll see so that's going to be for now hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later